Hello everyone! So, welcome again to another video for biological topics. So, for today, we were going to have uh, we were going to have a discussion related to this uh, to this thing that you see right here in this presentation. All right. So the one that you see here in this picture is the Morse code. All right. So it is developed by Samuel Morse, and this is the first uh, this is the first way of communication way back uh, 19th century. All right. So. Now, in the Morse code, so in, in this Morse code, every letters and numbers that you see here is composed of dots and dashes. Now, the combination of dots and da the combination of the dots and dashes that you see here uh, tells us that particular uh, pattern is made or makes up a certain letter or a certain statement. Now, in this um, in this set of pictures or in this particular you know, in this particular picture that we have right here, so as you can see, more dash and da uh, dots and dashes are are uh, combined in a certain way that creates another um, another message. For example, this number seven, the patterns of number seven, the dots and dashes of number seven is different from number six. All right, so this is the Morse code. All right, the next one is the Dead Sea Scroll. So if you if you are familiar with the Dead Sea Scroll, this is the this is where the Old Testament. Or the New Testament, rather, is uh, is translated. All right. So when they uh, when some uh, experts translate this Dead Sea Scroll, that's the that's the time that they uh, they uh, produce the New Testament of the Bible. All right. So translate code and other stuffs. So those are the things that we were going to talk about in this particular video. So it talks about the codes and translations of these codes and basically we will talk about the DNA, how DNA makes protein. So in this lesson, we will talk about how uh, DNA creates, uh, how how DNA creates this particular protein that, that is present in our body through the process of photos or uh, protein synthesis rather. But before we go to this one, we will explore first how DNA uh, how DNA rep replicates. Alright, so we will discuss first how replication of DNA happens in a cell division. Alright, so let's get this over with. Alright, we will start first with the DNA replication. So how does... How does the DNA replicate during uh, any kind of cell division? For example, we have meiosis and also the mitosis. So, if you ever wonder how DNA replicates or how do DNA replicates or creates its copy inside a particular cell that is produced after that particular cell division. Alright, so let's define first. What is a DNA replication? DNA replication is the process by the DNA that can or that creates a copy of itself during cell division. So as I've said earlier, during the cell division, these DNA molecules or DNA uh, strands creates a copy of itself so that, all right, so that the other cells must have or should have the same copy of the original DNA that is uh, divided in the first place. All right, so. Now, it happens during the S phase of the cell division. So, if you remember, if you remember the process of uh, cell division, the, the PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, before the prophase, we have, for, we have the interface. Now, in the interface, we do have S1, then S2 phase, then we have the G phase, something like that. Alright, so in this particular, in this particular phase, which is the interface, it it consists or it the S space is in there as well. So in the S space, this is where the replication happens. So basically in the interface and inside the interface, the S space of the cell division. So it happens in the mitosis. Yeah. So also it happens in the meiosis part of cell division. Alright, so that is that is DNA replication. 
Alright, so basically in this picture, you will see how the DNA creates its own uh, exact copy by creating its complementary strand. Now, if you recall on the past videos that we uh, that we have, so the complementary strand should be uh, from the word itself complement. So the base, the not nitrogenous bases should be complementary to the other bases. For example, the A. Alright, so the A should be complementary to T and the C is complementary to G. In several ways, it can be reversed, G and C, T and A, so so on and so forth. But it follows that rule, the complementary base pairing rule that A and T should be complementary to each other and C and G is complementary to each other. Now, so after the discovery of the DNA, so scientists are baffled on how um, the DNA uh, replicates. So basically, they are uh, they are debating on how the DNA replicates. And uh, upon their research, they found out several models that will explain how the DNA replicates. Alright, so according to some uh, hypothesis, so there is a, what they call semi-conservative, conservative model and dispersive model of the replication of the DNA. Now, what we have right here, let's start first with the semi-conservative model. Alright, so the semi-conservative model, the the parental uh, the parental DNA so which is this one will uncoil and the blue ones that we have right here this blue one these are the new uh, strands which is complementary to the parental DNA uh, sequence so after the first replication so what happens is again this uh, this daughter strands that you have right here will uh, will uncoil itself and will undergo to the next replication and basically after the second replication the the daughter cells will produce the complementary base that uh, that they contain all right so only the complementary base so meaning to say the daughter cells will now produce a newly synthesized strand so in this process in this process so that the parental dna uh, the parental dna is being um, is being um, distributed on the daughter cells or on the, not on not on the daughter cell but on the daughter strand after the second replication and that's the semi conservative model other scientists uh, discussed about uh, the conservative model now in this particular model the parental dna uncoils then uh, what happens all right what happens is from the word itself conservative so the parental dna still uh, or the parental dna uh, will not uncoil and then it will produce a newly synthesized uh, strand one here and the original parental um, a parental strand is over here then this newly synthesized strand will uh, will will undergo replication then what happens is it will produce another two daughter cells of its or of the same uh, strand and also the parental dna or the parental ones or the original one will produce its same kind and a newly synthesized uh, strand all right, so that's the conservative model. All right, so which means that the parental DNA will not change its uh, sequence, yet it will, will just produce, the parental DNA itself will just produce a newly synthesized strand, a complete newly synthesized strand during the replication process. Now, meanwhile, there are some scientists that argues that it should be dispersive model. So according to them, that the parental DNA so the, the parental DNA in this dispersive model is a mixture of a newly synthesized, the blue one, and the parental DNA. So this is the mixture, all right? So this is a mixture between um, DNA or between the strands. And as the replication process goes, goes on, this particular, uh, this particular, uh, this particular set of strands that we have right here, this particular mixture of parental and uh, this, this mixture of parental and the newly synthesized strands will be dispersed all throughout the replication process. So, hence the word dispersive model. So, meaning to say that the parental strand that we have right here, this one, will be dispersed all throughout the replication process. Now, apart verifying upon verifying through some different experiment uh, 
scientists or biologists found out that the among these three, the most convincing model of how the DNA replicates is the semi or the semi conservative model. So because every experimental data that they uh, gathered the semi-conservative model always being consistent to the data that they uh, that they uh, gathered. Unlike the conservative ones and then the dispersive one, all the data are sometimes um, being uh, not consistent after all. Alright, so the one that we will follow right now, the one that we will going to discuss right now is the semi-conservative model of DNA replication. Alright, so in this particular setup, so as the replication fork, goes on both sides of this uh, particular uh, parental DNA, this, this violet one. So, as it goes both sides, so it elongates, so this one, so it elongates and then in, in eventually it will connect to this uh, particular strand. Then, after, after several uh, process of replication or after several... Uh, after several moments, so there are now two sets of DNA. Alright, so completely uh, complementary to each of the parental DNA strand. Alright, so that is, uh, this is another picture that shows how replication in the DNA happens. Alright, next one. Uh, this is the more detailed or this is the this is a better detailed uh, version of how DNA replication occurs. Now, as we all know that the DNA can be found inside the nucleus and what part of the nucleus, basically we have the chromosome. Alright, so if you uncoil the chromosome, mm, alright, so we have it right here. Now, so you cannot replicate a DNA which is uh, coiled into double strand. All right. So what you need is a helicase. This is an um, this is an enzyme. All right. So this is an enzyme needed to, uh, as you can see on the picture, it unzips the coiled DNA. All right. It unzips the coiled DNA to become a single-stranded version of the a version of it. So as this as this helicase zips through the DNA, it uncoils it, and then it becomes single strand one and the second strand that we have right here. Now, another enzyme that will complete the process which is called the DNA polymerase. So, the DNA polymerase is the one that creates the complementary strand for each of the parental strands that you have right here. So, this one. So, this thing that we have right here. So, this is the parental strand. Now, as you can see, as the polymerase or the DNA polymerase passes through that parental strand, the new complementary bases are created. Then, after a few moments, you have now not just one, but two sets of newly synthesized strands of DNA. Alright, so this is how DNA replication happens. So don't forget, the, the enzymes needed here is the helicase and the polymerase. The helicase, you just think of a zipper. Alright, so a zipper, when you zip it or when you zip down the zipper, so what happens is the zipper opens up. Then when you move up the zipper, then the, the zipper itself is, uh, the zipper close after a few, uh, after doing that so next one is the dna polymerase so don't forget how the dna polymerase works in this particular process without dna polymerase basically replication process will not be possible all right so that is dna replication all right uh, if we take a look at uh, how dna replication looks like in a chromosome so basically this is a uh, all right, so this is uh, this is what a chromosome looks like before replication. Then after replication, you have now uh, two sets of chromatid. All right, so two sets of chromatid. So we have a cent uh, we have the centromere at the mid middle, and basically that's how it looks like the chromosome after replication. So this one that we have right here. So this thing. All right, so. There we go. Now, what is the uh, basically what's the goal of the DNA replication? The goal of the DNA replication is that all the somatic cells will undergo cell division, especially mitosis. So, uh, log logically speaking, if you 
uh, if you produce through mitosis, the daughter cell should be similar to the parent cell. So basically, the parent cell's DNA should be similar to the daughter cell's DNA. Or otherwise, all right. So otherwise, every cell in your body will have different, all right, will have different uh, DNA uh, strands or DNA codes that is present in them so that is not logically possible all right so dna replication is very important in mitosis so that all cells should be the same same in color same in size same in function and other stops all right so that's the all right that's the simple goal of dna replication all right so same same genetic information all right so with that Let's go now to one of the one of the things that makes up all those traits that are found in Mendel's law of heredity. So if you remember the dominant and recessive traits, so the tall, the short, the green, the yellow ones, the constricted, the inflated, so on and so forth, these are these characteristics are manifested only because these characteristics are made up of a certain uh, materials and these materials are called proteins. So the question that we have right now is how proteins are made? What makes those straight possible and how are these proteins came to be? Alright, so we will use the idea of your DNA and RNA molecule in this particular discussion. Alright, so are you ready? So let's proceed. Now what is the main idea of this whole, whole thing that we have right here? Alright, so DNA so the DNA is the genotype or uh, DNA genotype is expressed as protein. So basically the DNA molecule contains all the codes that creates protein. All right? So meaning to say in in your uh, previous uh, lessons in genetics, all right? So a genotype is the genetic uh, manifestation or genetic uh, all right, genetic manifestation of a particular trait. For example, the tall all right, so tall or uh, the tall or the homozygous tall or heterozygous tall or whatsoever. So this is the genotype. So this is a heterozygous tall. This is a homozygous short. Then the other one is the homozygous tall that we have right here. So basically, these are the genotypes. This is what the or the genes. All right, that comprise uh, that comprise that particular uh, what you call that characteristic. Alright, now, uh, the phenotypic traits, these are the physical, the physical aspect of that particular genes. For example, tall. I mean to say the height of the organism, tall. Then short, then uh, we, have, we have green, then yellow, and then so on and so forth. So, all those physical manifestations on what you see on the organism is basically the phenotypic traits of it. Now, those phenotypic traits are made up of, uh, these are possible because there are proteins that are included on it as well. Alright, so the, there are two, two stages of how the protein is created in the, uh, in the cell. Alright, so we have the transcription and we have the translation process. Alright, so this genetic information are written in codons. It is translated into amino acid sequence. So what is a codon? So please take notes. Please take note. Codons are alright, so codons are three letter uh, three letter uh, combination of the DNA. For example, we have A T C CTA and then so on and so forth. So it always have three letter combination. These are codons. So don't forget that one. All right, codons are made up of three nitrogenous bases combination. It is it is always three. All right. So basically this is uh, the the thing that you see here. This is the genetic code chart. So later chart. So uh, later we will go into genetic uh, codon. Alright, codon chart. Alright, so later we will going to utilize this one. So I will teach you how to use this particular codon chart so that in the if you want to uh, if you want to know what kind of protein 
Alright, so nut protein on this uh, at this point in time it is uh, somehow the amino acid. So if you want to know what kind of amino acid is produced per codon, so you will know in this particular codon chart. Alright, so take basically how many amino acids do we have right here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Alright, twelve, thirteen, uh, fourteen. Uh, 15, 16, 17. Alright, so we have 17 and 18. 19. Alright, so uh, so we have 20, yan, including the serine over here. So we have 20 sets of uh, amino acid that we have right here, which is made up of different combinations of codons that you have right here. So, so, how are these codons generated? So, that's the question that we have right here. So, we will go now, alright, so to the first process of DNA or protein synthesis that we call. Alright, so in this picture that you see here, this is the Rosetta Stone. Only some expert uh, Egyptologists can translate this uh, Rosetta Stone that we have right here. And once you translate it, you'll be able to decipher what is the meaning of this particular stone that written on this stone that we have in this picture. Alright, so basically, what the Egyptologists did is the transcription or, or rather the translation. So, what we have right here, this is the first process of uh, the, the DNA or the protein synthesis to be exact. So, this is the first process called the transcription process. So, the transcription is the process of creating RNA copy of the sequence of the DNA. So, basically, it creates the mRNA version. So, meaning to say you need DNA template. The one who will copy the DNA template is the RNA. Then after a few, uh, uh, after several moments, after copying, you will now create your mRNA. Now, the question is, is the mRNA similar to the sequence of your DNA? Alright, so if you think that it is similar, write it down in the comment section below this video. Alright, so... Okay, so the transcription process. Basically, the keyword here is the RNA copy. Alright, the RNA copy the sequence of the DNA. So the word is copy. The keyword here is copy. Alright, so it is similar. It is similar to your classmates or the, the, the classmates that you know that copies your notes. Alright, so that copies your notes that is needed for a uh, recitation or, or a test or an examination, something like that. Alright, so the your classmate that copies your notes is the one that we have right here called the RNA. Alright, so you, your notes, is the DNA sequence that he or she copies. Alright. Now, this is the overall uh, look of the transcription process in a particular um uh, strand of DNA, particularly the gene, uh, in, uh, the gene that is uh, involved in that particular process. All right, so as we can see here, um, again there is what they call an RNA polymerase. The, there is a, an, an RNA polymerase that will approach the DNA sequence, the one that we have right here, this one. Okay, so. Um, now, uh, there is a part of the DNA which is called the promoter. This is, uh, from the word it's a promoter, it is the start where the transcription, or this is the starting point where the transcription will begin. Alright, now with the presence of the RNA polymerase, it will initiate, this is the, uh, this is the first process, it will initiate the DNA, uh, the copy of the DNA or copying of the DNA uh, sequence. So it will start on the promoter, then it will slide through the sequence until it reaches the terminator. So for the, for, for, from the name itself, terminator, which means stop. So basically, it stops the copying or the it stops the copying process of the RNA polymerase on the DNA. Now, as it does, as the 
As the RNA polymerase slides down through the DNA sequence, as you can see, there is what they called uh, the second part, which is the elongation, this one. The RNA grows, so it is, uh, hence it is called elongation, which means it grows. The, the, RNA, the RNA molecules that is produced by the RNA polymerase, it starts to grow, and as we all know that the RNA is a single-stranded molecule or single-stranded uh, nucleic acid. Then afterwards, once it reaches the terminator part of the DNA, it stops the copying process and the completed RNA will now go outside the nucleus. By the way, the transcription process happens inside the nucleus. Only the RNA, this one, the thing that we have right here, only the RNA is the one that a enables it to enter inside the nucleus and do this particular process. Alright, so as you can see here, alright, so as you can see here, so this is the DNA sequence, the blue one, and the RNA sequence that is already created. That, so we, are, we call this RNA, RNA uh, strand that we have right here, we call it the mRNA. Alright, so it contains the sequence that it, it copies, it copied on the DNA sequence that we have right here so again uh, we have here the hydroxyl group so if it is three prime it should be attached to the opposite side of the dna which is five prime so we have three prime is to five prime and five prime is to three prime all right so that's the that's the pattern that you, you should uh take note here and also the dna uh, that is create or the RNA that is created the mRNA to be exact the direction of the transcription follows on how the RNA will be produced all right so that's the transcription process remember transcription is related to the word copying yeah so copying and it creates a copy all right now the second process is called the translation Alright, so after the RNA goes out the nucleus, so the translation process happens in the cytoplasm. Basically, uh, the, the organelles that are involved here, or the things that are involved here is the ribosomes yeah, and the mRNA sequence that is obtained in the first place. Alright, so this is the first stage of uh, protein biosynthesis. So what happens here is... Uh, all right. So what happens is here is uh, it, it start it it's, it starts to create proteins by decoding what the mRNA said. All right. So what what is on the mRNA what the mRNA has produced in the transcription process. So basically, if you take a look at the Rosetta Stone earlier, so the one who can translate what is written there are the Egyptologists, the expert Egyptologists. So what happens here is once they transcribe that one, the messages that is written on that stone will be published so, so that you will know what is written, what is technically written on that particular Rosetta stone. Alright, so the translation process. This is very important. Now what is written on the mRNA will be translated here so that it will create a protein. Now, as I've said earlier, it occurs in the cytoplasm, technically on the ribosomes, alright? So where the ribosomes are located. So if you remember the endoplasmic reticulum, which is part of the cell, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is the one uh, related to this particular process. Alright, so what, what does it require? If the transcription process creates mRNA, then the translation process requires tRNA for interpreting this one. Now, without the tRNA, mRNA will be utterly useless. Alright, so it requires the tRNA to be interpreted by the M or to interpret the mRNA. Alright, so let's proceed. Alright, so in this process, alright, so in this process, after the transcription on letter A, now it, uh, the tRNA uh, strands that we have right here, these are, by the way, this is now called anticodon. Alright, so this is now called anticodon. Why, uh, why do we have it anticodon? Because uh, if the codon here is 
the codon that is instructed by the DNA, then the one that is created by the mRNA is the one that is opposite to the codon that is copied by the mRNA. So, basically, the AUG, the anti-codon of AUG is UAC. The anti-codon of UUC is AAG. Now, where is the, uh, or what, okay, what should we follow in producing the amino acid? Is it the anti-codon or the codon part? So, this one. Right? So, okay, the mRNA codon. Alright, so what should we follow? Basically, the one that we should follow is the codon, this RNA strand that we have right here. Not the anti-codon one. Now, if you follow the anti-codon, you will be confused and then you will get, uh, you will get uh, a wrong answer in your examination. Alright, so the AUG is translated or translated to become the methionine amino acid. The UUC will be translated, so we will verify this one later. The UUC will be translated to become the phenylalanine uh, amino acid. So, let's take a look if, if we are uh, correct. Okay, so let's take a look here. UUC. Okay, so first base, U. Okay, this one. Next, the second uh, base codon is U. Alright, so it is somewhere here on this, uh, this quadrant. So, UUC. So, let's take a look on this side, which is the third base codon. So, here we are. So, UUC. So, there we are. So, use a ruler. So, if we track this down. So, UUC is... Alright, so phenylalanine. Let's take a look at UAG. Alright, so U... A. So, you will just look at this, uh, at this column. AG. Alright, so UAG is a stop. Or I mean, uh, I'm uh, I, uh, pardon on that. AUG, I mean. So we have A, then U, G. So the AUG is somewhere here, so it is methionine. So basically, basically it's the mRNA codon that you should follow here. So please take note of that. So the mRNA codon is the one you should follow, not the anti-codon tRNA. Alright, so let's move on. Now, as the process continues, so as the process continue, the amino acid sequence it starts to elongate. So from our okay, so from one it became four, and as the process continues, it continues to grow and grow and grow. Now, um, and as it approaches the stop codon. Remember the terminator part of the DNA. So this is now the stop codon in the mRNA. So if if the tRNA approaches that particular part, literally it will stop the translation process. So whatever that is created, the number of amino acids that is created through the process will now become what they call so from one amino acid. So a group of amino acid is now called poly uh, polypeptide. So this is now a polypeptide chain or also known as the group of amino acid is now called a protein. Okay, so protein is made up of amino acid which is chained together to form a polypeptide. Alright, so as long as long that the tr as long that the tRNA anticodon will continue to zip down through the mRNA strand Alright, so as long that it will not encounter stop codon, it will continue the whole process of creating protein. And it happens in the, don't forget, ribose. Okay, so uh, that is the translation process. Once the translation process is done, the protein will be shipped to whatever part of the cell or body that needs that particular protein. It can be a hormone a neurotransmitter or an enzyme or whatsoever okay all right so this is the difference between or this is the comparison and contrast between transcription and translation all right in the transcription all right so the product of it is the mrna remember dna cannot move outside the nucleus next one transcription occurs in the nucleus 
Just what I've said, transcription requires RNA polymerase. So, without RNA polymerase, transcription is nothing. Alright, next one. The translation process, alright, the translation process, the product of the translation process is basically the polypeptide chain protein. Alright, so if this one is mRNA, this one is protein. Next one, the translation occurs in ribosome. On the other hand, it is nucleus. On this translation process, it is always in the ribosome. Next one, the translation uses various reagent to create polypeptide chain. Yes, alright, so... Alright, it uh, it uses different uh, it uses different reagents. One of those is the tRNA. Next one is the rRNA and other stuffs that uh, that we have. This is these are the two of the, the two of the many stuffs that are needed in translation process. Alright, now how do they become similar? So both translation and transcription process contains nucleic or nitrogenous bases. Basically, cytosine, guanine, adenine, and uracil as their nucleotides. And and there will be no transcription and there will be no translation if you don't have a template. All right. So take note. All right. Take note. If your classmate is copying your notes, if your classmate is copying your notes, then if your if if that classmate of yours transferred the, or allows other your other classmate to copy his or her notes, the template that they use is similar to the template of your notebook that the first student who copied your note so it needs a template without a template these two process will be useless all right so basically the protein synthesis all right so protein synthesis from the word is a protein synthesis it creates protein all right process of creating protein the protein synthesis relies on these two processes that we have right here Alright, so in summary, the first process of protein synthesis is the transcription, then followed by translation. Then uh, inside the translation, the initiator or the initiator of the polypeptide synthesis, which is the anticodon called the tRNA, will create these particular sets of amino acid and enables them to become polypeptide in the long run then as it encounters the start uh, the stop codon it will stop the translation process then the whole polypeptide chain that they created will be transported to another port or part of the cell uh, to be used in other processes all right so basically what they create here is the material called protein. This is one of the important biomolecules. It keeps your hair, uh, it gives color to your hair, it gives color to the eyes, it gives color to the skin, it gives, uh, it allows the hormone to do its function, it allows the enzyme to break down everything else, and so on and so forth. That's how important the protein is in your uh, body and all on your cell. All right, so. With that, uh, let's try out some uh, examples or practice problems we have right here. Alright, so here we go. Okay, so what we have right here is the DNA sequence on this, on this side. So we are tasked, so you can post this video if you want to. So we are tasked to, uh, to provide all right, each and every column with the appropriate uh, equivalent strand and also the amino acid that contemplates this particular strand, the codon that you have right here. Alright, so let's take a look first at the complementary DNA strands. So obviously, if you follow the complementary base rule, so we have T, A, C. Then the other one, we have C, A. What's next? Alright, so we have G. Alright, so C, A, G. So that is the complementary DNA strand. Now, what is the mRNA strand? Alright, so here's the tricky part here. So, if you want to practice out, alright, if you want, if you, do, if you do not want to know first the answer, so you can post this video if you want. Alright, so what is the mRNA strand? So, basically, basically, it's it follows the complementary strand of the DNA. Only, remember, 
in M or in RNA, there is no T. There is no T. The T will be replaced by U. So this is equivalent to T. Alright, so what we have right here, if this is TAC in mRNA, we have U. A, C. Now, as you can see, it is similar to this one. Alright? So, this one is similar to this. Okay. Next one. The other one is C, A, G. Alright. So, this is your mRNA strand. Next one. The tRNA or also known as the anticodon. Alright? So, the anticodon. What will be the anticodon? Now, uh, basically, uh, Basically, you should uh, look at the mRNA strand. So, take a look at the mRNA strand. Then, you can find now the tRNA anticodon. Alright. So, let's start with the U. Obviously, it replaces the T. It will become A. Then, the A will become U. Then, the C will become G. Then, the C will become G again. Then, we, the A, we have U. And finally, we have G will become C. So, we have A, U, G. Then GUC on respective on this respective codon that we have right here. Now the amino acid part. All right. So what is the amino acid? What what codon should we follow? Again, take note that the amino acid will follow the mRNA codon. Why the mRNA? It's because it is the one that is similar to your DNA strand. Alright, so this is the complementary of your or the copy of the DNA strand that it copied during the process of transcription. Alright, so in this process, we cannot answer this one without the codon chart. Alright, so let's take a look. The first letter is letter U. Alright, so the first letter is letter U. So first letter U. Alright, so the first base. Next, the second letter is uh, A. So second letter, so this one. A. Alright, so this is the. Alright, so U, A. Then the third letter is C. Alright, so take a look at this third base codon. So on this column, let's take a look at. Yeah, so. Alright, so this is the row and this is the column. So let's take a look at letter C. So U, A, C and that is this one, so that is tyrosine. So that is TYR. Alright, so tyrosine. Alright, next one. Uh, on the next part, so did you have the same answer as mine? Alright, so next one, uh, we have CAG. So first letter is C. Alright, so we have A. Okay. So we have C, A. G. So, this is the CAG. So, it is the glutamine. So, GLN. So, we have GLN. Alright. So, that is the amino acid corresponding to the CAG. Do not follow this one. So, I repeat. Do not follow this one or else you will be confused. Alright. Next one. Again, the codon chart. So, don't forget to have this one. Alright? So, the codon chart. So, any codon chart will do as long that you are comfortable in using them. Alright. So, again, another practice problem. You can post this video if you want to. Alright? So, let's get started. So, what is the complementary strand? So, we have G, C, T. Alright. So, the other one is T, A, C. Alright. So, this is now called your codon. Alright, so what is the mRNA strand? So, just copy that, the one that we have right here, except do not put T on mRNA. So, we have G, C, U. Next one, we have U. Alright, we have U, A, C. Alright, next one. On the tRNA side, so this is now your codon. And on the tRNA, so basically, you just all we will, you will just do the opposite of this one. So we have C, we have G, then we have uh, we have A, we have A, we have uh, U, and we have G. All right. So what will be the amino acid correspond? Uh, what will be the corresponding amino acid on that one? So let's take a look at the. All right. So first one is the GCU. All right. So we have G, C. This one, all right. So GCU. So this one is the third one. So GCU is alanine. So we have A L A. All right. Next one. We have the UAC. All right. So UAC. 
Okay, so U, A, and C. So that is tyrosine. So we have T, Y, R. So that is tyrosine. Okay, so did you get the same answer? Or did you get the correct answer, the same as mine? Alright, so that's good. So let's uh, let's have a another practice, uh, another problem to work on. Alright, so same problem. You know already the drill, so let's start with the complementary strand. So we have A, we have T, then we have G. Then we have T, we have A, and we have A. Alright, so what will be the mRNA strand? Alright, so the mRNA strand will be A, U, G. So as you can see, it is the same here. Alright, except that uh, the T is replaced by U. All right, next one. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, U, we have A, and then E. All right. So again, this is called codon, right? These are called codons. Next one, the the anticodons, which is the tRNA. All right. So the tRNA, which is the thing, uh, which is uh, the anticodon. So we have uh, U, right? Then we have uh, A, and we have C, UAC. Alright, so next one. Alright, next one we have um, A, then we have U, U. So just take a look at this one. So since there's no letter T in RNA or there are no timings in RNA, so it is replaced by uracil. Now, again, let's use the DNA codon or genetic codon chart. Alright, so let's start first with AUG. Alright, so we have A. U, so let's take a look at AUG. So this is the G part. So, all right. So basically, you can write there uh, met or start. All right. So it it tells us that it is the start of the translation process. All right. Next one. All right. Let's take a look at UAA. All right. So we have U, A, A. Alright, so basically, uh, this is stop. So, this is just hypothetical, guys. So, this is just hypothetical. There's no such thing, uh, there's no such uh, process in which the translation will start and then stop immediately. Alright, unless there is a genetic problem or there's a genetic code problem in along the way. Alright, so... Basically, this is how the protein synthesis works. Alright, so... Today... Alright, so today we have learned the process of replication. Alright, so how the DNA replicates and it follows the process of semi-conservative model. And you know what are the enzymes involved in replication process? We have DNA polymerase and helicase. Alright, next one. Now, uh, the transcription process is done by the RNA inside the nucleus. So... The RNA uh, itself will copy the DNA sequence and then eventually it will be translated outside the nucleus, particularly in the cytoplasm, and it will create now the protein that is needed by the cell or by the body itself. Now, uh, in some instance, in laboratory procedure, uh, the RNA can be replicated, all right? So, in this process, in the laboratory, then, uh, now, uh, in some cases, the RNA or the DNA uh, can, uh, can be, or the RNA can do reverse transcription. So, it can be reversed to do, to find out what is the sequence of the DNA that the RNA is made of. Alright, so for example, if you have uh, you have an RNA uh, sequence over here. Now, if you want to know what will be the DNA uh, sequence of that uh, RNA, so you do reverse transcription. Usually, this is done inside the laboratory in some controlled environment. Alright, but in some cases, viruses do some reverse transcription, alright, in uh, as their special process that they do. So, these are uh, very special viruses. Most of the vi these viruses are retroviruses. All right, like the HIV. All right, next one. There are some processes in a controlled environment that the DNA can create protein without passing through these two processes. It can go through the process of uh, protein or creating the protein without the process of copying and reading or uh, deciphering what is the code that is copied by the RNA. So basically, the one that uh, produce that the one that is produced by transcription is the mRNA, 
and the translation is the protein. All right. So basically, all right. So basically, the things that you have right here, this to, uh, this uh, whole thing that you see right here, this is the central dogma of molecular genetics. All right. So what does it mean? The central dogma. It means that this is the pattern, the uh, the universal pattern that a cell or any kind of cell whether it is eukaryotic or prokaryotic that they sh or that this cell should follow in creating dna to protein all right so with that if you do have suggestion and comments about this video you can write it down below in the comment section all right so that ends up our video special shout out to my students in Mutinlupa science high school so the ten poly ten ptolemy uh Ten Pythagoras and ten piano. For thank you for watching, um, watching my video. All right, so that's it. So that ends up our uh, discussion today, and I hope you did learn something from it. So for now, don't forget to smile. All right, and let's see. Uh, we'll see you again to the next video. Thank you, and have a nice day.